warm up a little bit, you take it. If you ever send me this broken game gear, I've always wanted one, so today I'm gonna try to fix this. My friend Mike added a little note with everything he found from testing, but the number one rule of repair is to always test things yourself. The console came with a game, thankfully he included it, otherwise I would have needed to find the game to test this thing. Nothing's happening at all. There's some heavy corrosion on the battery contacts, so we need to scrape it off. It's powering on now, but it keeps turning off. Oh, it stayed on this time, but when something is intermittent like that, it's usually a capacitor issue. The sound is also very quiet, which can be caused by the same thing. My friend has also sent me some supplies for making this thing work again, like some new battery contacts and a cable to power this on. I've got my bench power supply here and I can set it to any voltage I want. This cable can't really be used by itself, so I'm going to get the standard alligator clips and stuff them into this thing. This is an American game gear, so the positive cable goes to the positive slot. If it were an European game gear, then it would have been the other way around. First I need to adjust the power supply to 9 volts, then I need to insert the connector, turn the power supply on and try to power on the game gear. Even while using the DC jack, it still acts intermittently and to me this means that we definitely have a capacitor issue. It manages to stay on after several attempts, just like with the batteries. This tells me everything I needed to know and I can proceed with the repair. Gatto! It is now time to take a look inside. Is this? No way. Is this a game bit? I thought only Nintendo used this, I'm actually quite surprised. Mamma mia! In di meglio morti ma... No, these are fake. I think he outglued this in. He got me good. For a second I started sweating and I was like, what the... Advertiser-friendly content. I want to take a quick look at the screen and it seems like somebody reflowed the screen ribbon cable. This could actually be very bad news because it could mean that the screen is dead or it died after they did that. I never buy specific capacitor replacement kits because usually they're extremely overpriced. I prefer buying generic kits and working off of what I have or what is closest to what I need. In the description you can find links to these kits as well as links to all my tools and multiple ways to support me. We're gonna start off with the power board using this kit here. This capacitor here has even started rusting. Here I don't have the exact capacitor that I need, so I'm just gonna use a slightly larger one. I've recently come up with this idea for cleaning things aggressively. You just need to be careful not to break the cotton swab inside the grinding pan, otherwise you're gonna have a bad time. The audio board uses a different type of capacitors, which are actually harder to desolder and even slightly unsafe to do so. I didn't have some capacitors that I needed, so I just grabbed the normal one and I performed a very complex Italian surgery on it. The problem with these capacitors is that they're very hard to desolder with a soldering iron, and even if you manage to do that, you're probably gonna damage the board. And if you use hot air, in some cases they can explode. I don't think it's too dangerous, but if the hot stuff gets in your eyes... So the general consensus for desoldering these is to actually destroy them. You just grab a pair of pliers and you twist them off. You could damage the board by doing it this way, so I don't really recommend this. You can simply remove the rest of the capacitor with your soldering iron. Underneath all the capacitors I found this red residue, so I don't think it's leakage, I think it's actually some kind of glue. I still tried cleaning it, but it didn't really come off too well. For desoldering these capacitors, you always need to flatten the pads. And if you do a good job, it's gonna be very easy. So here's the modified capacitor, and as you can see, it's gonna work just fine. It's only a bit unstable, so it's easy to yank off by accident. Now it's time to fix the motherboard. I need to clean off any corrosion and replace every single capacitor. But first... This video is sponsored by PCBWay. They make great prototype PCBs, and their website is really easy to use. You just have to upload your file and specify how you want it made, like the color, the thickness, and as long as you're not me, it will always look like this. Otherwise, it will look like this. Click the link below and sign up today for a $5 welcome bonus. I found some capacitor leakage here, Luckily, nothing corroded. While shooting this video, one of the neighborhood cats got hurt, and so I had to delay it. Grisu, hey. Grisu. Oh. It actually looked pretty bad, it got very swollen, so I brought him to a vet. He needed a lot of antibiotics, and I had to take him in. I have two more cats, so sadly I have to lock him in my room with me. Because of this, I shot the rest of the video on my phone. 
After replacing the capacitors, the game gear was refusing to work at all, worse than before. I was pretty sure I messed up the power board, I just didn't know how. It turns out, one of the replacement capacitors I used had a very low voltage rating, I somehow missed that. I also had to replace the large capacitor with the original one since the one I used was physically too big to let the console close. These capacitors were also wrong, I used a way larger value so they were physically too big. This time the console was turning on again, it was also way louder but the audio was heavily distorted at high volume. I'll come back to this again. In the meantime, check out this other video. I hope you're happy.